What's going on? We're back with another banger. This one's going to be loaded sweet potatoes. You can use regular potatoes if you want to, and what we're loading it with is a delicious chili con carne. It is super easy to make, tastes fantastic, and like always, I'll leave all of the nutritional values in the video and in the description. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, starting off, we're going to need five smallish sweet potatoes or any regular all-rounder potato if you're not a fan of sweet, and these have been scrubbed clean. That's why they look like this. We've then poke them up with a fork to create some air pockets which will allow for more airflow and create a more caramelized flavor as the natural sugars can escape. Let's then place these onto a baking tray lined with parchment paper, drizzle over two teaspoons or 10 milliliters of olive oil, sea salt flakes to taste, and hit them up with cracked black pepper. 10 cracks worth. Give these a quick shake in the oil and seasoning until coated all over, then transfer to a preheated oven set at 190 degrees Celsius or 375 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for one hour or until golden and soft. Whilst that's doing its thing, get yourself one brown or yellow onion that's been peeled and had its tip removed, leaving the root intact. Slice it in half and make thin slices across, stopping out the root. Make a horizontal slice to break the formation and cells, and proceed by dicing it into even-sized pieces, trimming off any excess flesh from around the root, saving all the pills and scraps for a stock. Next is three cloves of freshly peeled garlic that can be ran along a fine microplane to create a paste, making sure to scrape it all out of there to avoid any waste. And for an optional ingredient, here is one jalapeno that can have its stem removed. Slice it in half, then into quarters and thinly slice into even sized pieces. It is also up to you if you want to remove the pith and seeds, but if you enjoy a little bit of spice, I recommend leaving them in. That's of course if you're using it. Last but not least, another optional ingredient is 10 grams or 0.3 ounces of flat leaf parsley that can be scrunched up and roughly chopped, with this being used right at the end to add a little bit of freshness, but like I said, it's up to you whether or not you use it. Place a large high rimmed pan or pot over medium high heat, add in 1.5 tablespoons or 30 milliliters of olive oil and once hot, add in the diced onion. Let's then mix this around regularly and saute for three minutes just until it's slightly golden and starting to become translucent. Then add in the garlic paste as well as the thinly sliced jalapeno and a small pinch of sea salt flakes and continue sauteing for one minute, mixing the whole time to prevent the garlic burning, also breaking it up just in case it clumps up. With that done, add in 500 grams or 1.1 pounds of beef mince, mixing it and breaking it up. And I should mention I'm using 90% lean and 10% fat. Once broken up, continue mixing it through the other ingredients and cook this for six to seven minutes, not 67 minutes, just until browned all over and the fat content has started to render. If you do use a higher fat content, you may need to drain some of the fat, but that is completely up to you. Now that it's browned off, add in one tablespoon or 18 grams of tomato paste for a strong concentrated flavor, two teaspoons or five grams of ground cumin for an earthy warmth and that authentic chili flavor, two teaspoons or four grams of dried oregano for a slight minty freshness, one teaspoon or two and a half grams of smoked paprika for color and smoky peppery notes, half a teaspoon or one gram of cayenne pepper for a little kick, sea salt flakes to taste, and cracked black pepper, 20 cracks worth. Continue mixing this well to allow those flavors to become friends and cook this for two minutes, which will start getting the most flavor out of those herbs and spices. We can then deglaze the pan with three quarters of a cup or 180 milliliters of beef stock, mixing it through and reduce for one minute to allow it to pull up any stuck flavor from the bottom of the pan and add great depth to the overall flavor. Add in one can of crushed or diced tomatoes along with a splash of water to rinse out any excess. Again, mix it through, check it for seasoning and bring the sauce to a boil. Then once boiling, reduce the heat to low, cover and cook for 25 minutes. Going back to the potatoes that are now soft and golden, remove them from the oven and allow them to cool for 10 to 15 minutes. Remove the lid from the chili con carne, which leaves us with this delicious rich sauce that's nicely reduced. Add in one can of rinsed kidney beans along with the flat leaf parsley, if you're using it of course, and combine this all together just until it's incorporated, then remove it from the heat. With the potatoes cool enough to handle, let's then make a slice lengthways, and you can do a cross cut if you prefer, but then push these down on the sides to open them up, revealing that delicious soft sweet center. With them all open, spoon in the chili, ensuring that they're all well filled and you will have leftover sauce, which we'll use later on. We can then top these with some freshly grated cheddar or mozzarella cheese, which is completely optional, and you can use low fat variants if you'd like to, and of course, hit them up with some cracked black pepper. Use however much you want. Let's then place these back into the oven, which is now set on grill or broil, and cook these for five to six minutes, or until the cheese is melted and is lightly golden, then remove and turn off the oven as it is no longer needed. What we then have is these extremely delicious stuffed sweet potatoes that could be placed into separate meal prep containers, top them with the extra chili if you have any, which you should, 
Sprinkle over some sliced spring onion or scallion stems, which are optional, as well as coriander or cilantro. And you can also top these with some sour cream or sriracha mayo if you want to. But with all that done, we're then left with these beautiful potatoes that have so much flavor. Place on the lids and store these for up to five days in the fridge and six months in the freezer. Reheat in the microwave until hot. And as promised, here is all of the nutritional value so you know what you're eating. With everything done and us set up for the week, we can then dig in.